lesson of our course, the basics of storm chase targeting. And this final lesson is just simply put a sample workflow. We're going to go through a sample chase day. We're going to look at the data and we're going to make a targeting decision. Okay. So let's take a look. First thing you're saying though is why do I even need to know this stuff? I'm just going to check the SPC and just go wherever they tell me to go. Well, here's the problem today. Huh, where are you going to target? You can't target Detroit to a Lubbock. I'm just letting you know, you're not targeting Detroit, Michigan to Lubbock, Texas. And especially you're not going to be able to target Casper, Wyoming to Lubbock, Texas. You're not going to be able to target Kansas City to Dodge City. You're going to have to do some forecasting today because while the SPC is really good at what they do, this is a very big risk area today. So you're not going to be able to target anything. And for the most part, I'm just naming off the 5%. If you go 2%, you'd be Fargo, North Dakota to the Mexican border. So... Let's just take it for what it is. You've got a forecast today. So, the SPC isn't helping. I will cheat a little bit and say where we're looking at today is indeed on the plains because, well, I'm from the plains and that's what we're going to do. Sorry. So, anyways, there's a lot of things that happened on this day. But here's the early afternoon-ish weather conditions, surface conditions. You have a stalled front running across Kansas like this. You have a dry line arcing back south and west and, you know, roughly down into the Texas Panhandle. Winds are veering down here, it looks like. Up here, you have some upslope flow behind the front. You, this is a surface front. The timing is late spring. So you have some upslope flow here, 49 dew points. Uh, you know, it's not impossible that you could see something happen there. But again... You also have what would be basically a warm front, you know, running across like through here. So this front basically kept on, keeps on running. So it's a fun time. Anyways, well, let's take a look. You know, you have all this going on early afternoon-ish. Are we concerned about the possibility of maybe an outflow boundary within all this as well? Well, let's take a look. Well, not really. Um, there was some shower activity up here in northwest Kansas. There is some uh, shower storm activity down here in Texas early afternoon. So I'm here in Oklahoma along this front. There's a little boundary of sorts right through here too. No, nope, not much to worry about. Radar, I don't think we got to worry about an outflow boundary again. You go through here and you're not seeing much evidence of that being the case anyway. So not, not worrying about that. So let's take a look at the upper air. This is, forms our wind shear. Uh, this is actually a zero Z plot. What we're going to instead do is say this is a forecast model because quite honestly, hunting down forecast model data archived is difficult. So anyways, let's let's take a look. Uh, you know, we're seeing that there's gonna be some good 500 millibar winds in the middle of the atmosphere up here in Kansas. What's that down here in Oklahoma? That's five knots. So there's a dead zone right here. And then you know, 30 knots, you have 40 knots, you have 30 knots up here in or, yeah, Colorado. 45 knots so there's a belt you know you can see a general trough there, it's not very strong but there's a belt of stronger winds uh somewhere in here it looks like so let's take a look at what 850s look like and you can see you know you have some backed 850s right through here moisture uh pulling back here in the southwest nebraska you have some south uh westerly 850s probably some southerly 850s through here in central kansas and you have some southerly 850s down into the northwest oklahoma 40 40 knot 850s here in central Oklahoma. it's not a factor though because again there is no boundary in central Oklahoma. but a decent low level jet decent 850s 60 knots though look at that right here at amarillo 60 knots checking in that's pretty good out of the south southwest so that's something you got to watch so let's take a look at our satellite now just to double check this also this allows you to check for a few things most notably is outflow boundaries you would see outflow boundaries on a satellite image like this if there were was one you would see it you know just a line of clouds perhaps a little bit right here there's there's something you know uh we need a higher resolution uh to see that and there's definitely some sort of a boundary uh snaking through here uh with that shower activity so that's something to watch that's also that's that stalled front is what it is but that would be something you would want to watch so let's take a look it's early afternoon we're in wichita we're trying to figure out where we want to go. At this point, you know, seeing all this, I would say the areas that I'm looking at closely 
would be, you know, sitting here would be up here in Kansas or down here, you know, somewhere along the dry line from the Texas Panhandle into Northwest Oklahoma. I am concerned about that, though. I mean, where do those winds end? Where, you know, where the stronger ones begin? That's a good question. So let's take a look at instability. The, let's start looking at some composites and see if uh, that'll help break the tie. Well, <laughs> look at that. 5,000 ml cape. That is extreme. That would be extreme surface base, much less ml cape. Surface base cape on this day was pushing over 6,000 even. Uh, this is uh, this is a loaded atmosphere, to put it mildly. Do not do anything. Don't breathe hard. Don't step too hard. You're going to have storms explode if so. It's that big of a powder keg. So, uh, yeah, 5,000 cape. You have an uh, area of 5,000 mil cape here in west central Oklahoma as well. You have the dry line obviously arcing a little, you know, pretty decent instability moisture kind of gradient here to the west. But, you know, looks like there's a little bit of uh, arcing going on here. I would put that, say there's a triple point, which there is. If you look, there's a triple point going on right through there. So, you know, there, there is a decent little, thanks to that moisture pooling behind the front, there's a decent little bit of gradient. But there's definitely a triple point. So the triple points right here, remember what we always said. That's where you go to. Uh, this is no different, I don't think. Uh, the dry line looks good if you wanted to target a secondary area. That looks pretty good. Good instability. Let's take a look at our early afternoon bulk shear. Yeah, it's got, you got 40 knots down here on the dry line. That's pretty good. You have 40 knots of shear up here, too, in northern Kansas. 50 knots up here in southeast Nebraska and southern Iowa. That's pretty good. I mean... That's a pretty decent little target right here. You know, you also down here further along the dry line, you actually have an area of shear. So you got probably, you know, from Wichita, you're not making this by early afternoon, so we can scratch that out. You know, you're really looking through here and you got a couple areas, Northwest Oklahoma and North Central Kansas that look interesting. Now, zero to one kilometer SRH in the early afternoon. It's not bad, it's not good. 50, that's far from terrible you got a little area of 100 here i would venture to say that you know this is something that improves through the day so you'll probably end up with some pockets of over 100 which is as we've said good enough for you guessed it tornadoes let's take a look 300 wow look at this three zero to three kilometer again you're looking for that uh our second target here down in northwest oklahoma pretty paltry early afternoon wouldn't you say it's a hundred it's not very good zero to three kilometer it's pretty marginal so you got to ask yourself, what, what are you doing? I mean, you're looking at all this. You know, you have your cape. You have your bulk shear. You have, you know, your SRH. It's all pointing, I think, up here to Kansas. It seems obvious, does it not? Big risk area, big risk area. But when you get down to it and you start analyzing, it looks like you're pointing to a general direction. You got Kansas here, and it looks like you have a secondary target in Oklahoma back here. Uh, that, you know, thanks to the little increase in bulk shear, a little, you know, just enough of uh, SRH. I, I think Oklahoma is in play, especially given the nice 30 knot south southwesterly. I would guess between 30 and 60. It's somewhere in there. There's plenty of low level shear and upper levels, 25 knots, pretty marginal. So, you know, you have a decent more, you have a decent gradient here to look forward to. So, that's what I think. I mean, I think that's what you're looking at. This is what I thought you were looking at the day of this event, I might add. It's just pretty obvious right there, right here. So, what happened on this day? What, what happened? Well, this is what happened. You did. You had a tornado, a couple of tornadoes here in northwest Oklahoma, in the Oklahoma Panhandle, Big Hill Report secondary target you actually had a couple pr couple pretty stout supercells even further south than the texas panhandle but up here in kansas you had a pretty decent little tornado event uh this one in particular right northeast of the triple point this one was more right on it this is right northeast this one in particular is famous for a reason it was the bennington kansas tornado on may 28th 2013 you had several different tornadoes along this frontal boundary tornadic storms uh, you know, I, I forget what this one did exactly. And you had this one, which was a big tornado as well. But you had Bennington, which was the more famous and notable. And actually, if you look up here where this 5% was, look at all those tornadoes. That's pretty pretty remarkable as well. And also, just want to point out, remember this? We were, I was talking about this. You had that 
moisture surging back north and west and you had you know just 49 dew points but look at that you got tornadoes out here in western nebraska and southeast wyoming never discount this upslope play sometimes uh, it will surprise you i mean you saw spc was all over it with that five percent not many people did this and uh they missed out there were tornadoes up there so if you're after tornadoes this this was pretty good too but the star of the show obviously was bennington kansas so just get you know i hope that just little exercise gives you a brief idea about what it's like to target and not rely upon these guys these guys are great they're good at what they do and there's a lot of days they're going to point you right to where you need to go i mean in all honesty they are uh but i would say you want to learn how to do this stuff because this stuff's going to get you there a whole lot more it's going to get you to the better stuff so you know just learn it uh, that's basically it for this course. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, I mean, we answer on YouTube, via email, on our contact form. I think you can even comment on the site. So welcome them all. Uh, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.